Welcome to our webinar series, Redefining Productivity with a Digital Workplace on Office 365. I'm Daryl Trimble, CEO of SP Marketplace. We've been working with Office 365 to transform the way people work with out-of-the-box workplace solutions on Office 365 and SharePoint. Today, we have over 1,000 customers using our products worldwide to redefine how work is done. In this webinar series, we'll take a look at the traditional IT model versus a digital workplace on Office 365 and how it impacts employee productivity, IT costs, and ability to grow for the company. We'll take a look at what a digital workplace is. We'll take a look at some of the problems of the current IT structure and how it's done. We'll introduce what a digital workplace components are and how Office 365 can deliver that workplace. We'll take a look at the business case for a digital workplace for your organization and how you can evolve to a digital workplace over time, leveraging Office 365. The webinar series will be broken up into three parts, and this is part one of the webinar series. As an introduction, there's a lot of talk out there about digital workplaces and redefining how we work. Workforce productivity has come to the forefront of a lot of the focus of the IT community. Analyst firms like Gartner Group, IDC, Forrester are all talking about the opportunity to redefine how we look at IT and the IT infrastructure leveraging digital workplace technology. So let's take a look at what is a digital workplace. A digital workplace is really a central workspace that encompasses all technologies, information, collaboration, and processes people use to get their work done from anywhere, anytime, on any device. And really it's bringing together technology, the components of collaboration, people. So technology of being different devices, uh, components of collaboration such as uh, the ability to do chat, discussions, share information, meetings, and so on, and get information about different people you can interact with through directories. It's also taking a look at combining information, documents, news, business intelligence through dashboards, and other things, and then finally merging that with the business processes that actually run your organization. Now, often all of these components are separate pieces, but the whole concept of a digital workplace is to really bring into a worker's space all the things they need to do their job effectively. That is the concept of a digital workplace. We'll be going in the second webinar series into what exactly a digital workplace is and what it comprises. But first, let's take a look at why we need a digital workplace in the first place. And really the problem comes down to that today, employees are faced with a barrage of different applications and technologies, uh, having to sign on, having to learn to use many different solutions and applications in their job. And really the problem is what we call organic IT. It's really driven by the traditional concept of growing an organization through functional departments, which are there to provide services as well as handle different processes in the organization. However, what has happened is they've really driven through different isolated views a mess of IT infrastructure. So let's take a look at kind of how the traditional organization has typically grown. What happens in many organizations is that as the organization grows, different departments or functional areas are formed. HR, IT, sales, customer service, administration, marketing. And each of them has their own policies and procedures and develops in isolation a lot of the processes for their function. Now, that's great for the individual functions, but when you bring in employees and have to have them interact, especially across functional lines, it becomes a really tough situation. So there's a couple of issues with, with this model. First of all, let's take a look at how IT actually gets put in place from this model. We call it organic IT or naturally occurring IT. So let's say the HR department forms and grows. They add different systems for, with different functions over time to 
automate many of their processes and help them track many more and more employees and hire more and make changes and track different documents. IT also forms and adds help desks and then has to track assets and vendors and other things as well, and they add additional systems. Finance and administration also does the same thing. Marketing, sales, and services adds their own systems. And finally, engineering and product design also may have their own systems. And then on top of that, for employees, they need to have their office automation capabilities as well. Unfortunately, none of these work with each other. And the result is a couple of things. Number one, uh, IT costs go up quite a bit. And this is because all of these have to be maintained. Employee productivity suffers because everything's all over the place. And then finally, it becomes a hindrance to, for the business to actually grow. So let's take a look a little more. Let's take, first of all, a look at employee productivity. To do their jobs, employees need to get at different information, uh, different policies, different procedures, different processes, news, information. They need to collaborate. They need to get at contracts and different documents as well as access different processes like time off or expense reporting or other things. Now, these are core to the employees actually doing their job every day. Unfortunately, all of these types of things are spread all over the place. And this really frustrates the employee and takes time away from their core focus of their job function. A second impact is on IT costs. For each application that you have out there, there is a whole bunch of work that has to go along with it. And so things like managing users and sign-on and securities and groups for each application is a different thing they have to do. Managing devices, if you want to go mobile, if you have a whole bunch of different applications out there, each one of them has a different way of handling uh, mobile devices. Data can't be shared. User interfaces are different across all the different applications. So that increases the need for uh, training for users, as well as you have to manage updates, backups, new versions, and you have to support each different application. All of this creates a lot of costs, not only for IT, but even for your payables group, your accounting, because they're each dealing with different vendors typically. So even for just the applications on this page that we see, there are 133 different things that has to be managed across these different applications. No wonder IT costs and IT staff um, needs are higher than ever. A second area here too, beyond employee productivity and IT costs, uh, first of all, chaotic management reporting. So it's very easy to get reports out of each application, but try to get a picture across departments or across these different applications, it's very chaotic. This is why you see huge data warehouse uh, efforts and projects in larger companies. In smaller companies, there's not a lot you can do about it. And that really leaves management saying, hey, how can I see what's going on across the com company? And IT saying, sorry, we can't pull that together. And then finally, it becomes a roadblock to new initiatives and growth. So if you, just taking a look at an a technology initiative, the move to mobile. It's almost impossible to move your workforce to be able to use any device at any time from anywhere because each application has a different way of doing it. If you have reorganizations or moving people around or groups, that's very tough to do because you're now having to manage it across many different applications, many different users, and many different permission groups. New initiatives are hard to add in and bring in because you can't necessarily uh, support them with the existing applications because it's just too complex. And then finally, just growth in hiring. Uh, hiring and onboarding itself becomes a big problem because of all the things that have to be set up. So in summary, let's take a look at the cost of what this organic IT kind of infrastructure that kind of naturally grew Cost your company. Employee productivity is negatively impacted. They can't find resources. They can't get information that they need. It's flying past them in emails. 
They can't access services consistently from different departments. They have redundant data entry, especially if you have disparate applications, such as in sales or in HR, where you might have multiple different employee lists that each functional application may have. So the biggest thing here, though, is employee frustration, even that they cannot focus on their jobs. And anytime they have to deal with anything inside the organization, it's total chaos. As we saw, IT costs, it's an ever spiraling out of control thing. And it's almost like an addiction. People in the department still buy more and more best of breed applications, which creates more and more applications to support and maintain for IT and adds to the chaotic infrastructure. It makes it hard to integrate and share between applications and get a view of things such as management visibility across things for reporting. And as we saw, it affects ability to grow. So the cost of this organic IT infrastructure, which really I think is almost like a silent epidemic across businesses, is a huge issue that most IT organizations and CIOs don't even realize is going on. So a question is, do you have organic IT infrastructure? Well, let's take a look at some of the symptoms. Do you or your users have to keep notebooks to keep track of your user IDs and passwords? Do you need an automated onboarding system for new hires? specifically because you have so many setup tasks now needed for new employees, a lot of them driven through IT and setting up for new different systems. Is email the main way that your employees get news or is processing approvals in manual type processes or getting questions answered from different organizations such as IT, HR, and so on that may not have help desks? and leaves employees chasing around to see if their service request got addressed. Can you find the latest employee drug policy in one minute or less? If not, then possibly your documents are all over the place. If password assistance is the main case type in your IT help desk, that may be a symptom as well. And If your IT group has to use a spreadsheet or complex task tracking just to keep up with all the application maintenance and renewals for application administration. And if your IT budget is more than your marketing budget or some other functional organization, that's probably a symptom right there as well. So if you've answered yes to four out of seven, then chances are you pretty much are in an organic IT model that has grown over time naturally. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's probably greater than 70% of the organizations in the world. There wasn't much other choice, and that's the way things were done. But let's take a look at what we're going to learn in the rest of the webinar series and how a digital workplace can impact that. So this is where a digital workplace can come in. This is a new way of doing things that puts the employee first as far as workplace productivity in how you design your IT infrastructure. You're not going to throw out all your back office systems, but you are going to start paying attention to how employees work, how they access technology, and how easy it is for them to get their job done. With the digital workplace, we'll show you in the webinar series here how you can significantly improve productivity by moving from kind of a chaotic mess of technologies that employees have to deal with to an organizational hub concept with a common user experience on a consistent platform that drives collaboration, communication, and provides a basis for providing internal services. And that's gonna make your employees happy. It'll also simplify IT administration, going from managing a whole bunch of application platforms down to a common set of platforms or a reduced set of platforms, which significantly reduces IT work and administration. And that will significantly reduce overall IT costs for your organization. It will allow you to move to a very powerful, centralized business intelligence capability where you don't have to build data warehouses, where you can easily bring together data to provide management visibility for your executives and management. And finally, it'll knock down some of those walls to growth that complexity 
puts up. So it'll allow you to take advantage of new technologies like mobile, be able to handle reorganizations and new initiatives, and simplify hiring across your entire organization. So this is really what webinars are about, is showing you what a digital workplace is and how you can evolve to a digital workplace model in technology infrastructure, business process support, how your organization might change to support this, and cultural considerations and continued evolution. So the next part of our series, we'll dive into exactly what a digital workplace is, the components, what you have to do to set up a digital workplace on Office 365. And you'll be surprised because a lot of it's already there. And if you own 365, you already have a digital workplace platform and you didn't even know it. So part two is what is a digital workplace and how can you work with it on Office 365?